Today we're talking about alternatives to alcohol for flavor dilutions or working with essential oils. And it's for people who don't want to use alcohol or they can't. So there are lots of alternatives and I'm going to go through three today. These two are particularly good. And it can be used anywhere where you want to dilute flavor compounds or essential oils that are high in terpenes that just don't seem to dissolve in vodka, for example. Because though vodka is good, it's not great because at 40%, there's still too much water in it. So it prevents some things from dissolving. So even if you get 45%, that's not ideal. The, here's a general rule. If it's 65% ABV to 70% ABV, that's your sweet spot. So if you can buy Everclear and dilute it down and you're okay with using alcohol, then that's great. This is, you know, stick with it. There's nothing wrong with alcohol. It's, you know, increases shelf stability and storage life for flavor concentrates and there's some other benefits to it. But if you can't use alcohol or you want an alternative, uh, I'll show you those today. So first of all, let's talk about glycerin. Uh, this one for the most part, other than a few simple cases is garbage. It doesn't work that well. It does work for some things, but it's so viscous. You know, it, it, you see people using it for vanilla and it works because most of the vanilla compounds are partially water soluble. So they will go into this. Glycerin is kind of a sugar alcohol, but it's not really like alcohol in its solvent power. Uh, it's closer to water in that case. So I don't find it to be a great solvent. The viscosity is not fun to play with for extracts and really doesn't do a good job on anything like these flavor concentrates that need a little more uh, solvent power to get them in solution. Yeah, if you only have glycerin, it'll do in a pinch, but there are better ones. So, you know, the obvious choice is propylene glycol. Now this one has been around since the 60s. You can get it in really high purity. In chemistry, there is this thing like dissolves like. So water-based compounds will dissolve in water and organic compounds will dissolve in organic solvents. So uh, propylene glycol has a methyl group or basically a methyl group available to interact with other methyl groups in these. Now, I'm not gonna get too deep into the chemistry, but the one methyl group on this that's free makes it a better solvent because there are none in glycerin. And it's probably the most common one, though it's not particularly great with things like some of the essential oils that are high in terpenes. So, you know, things like uh, bitter orange oil and lemon oil, those may work better in these two. Now with propylene glycol, uh, legally, at least in North America, the maximum amount you can use in, you know, a product is 2%, which is plenty. I mean, you don't need to really go any higher than that. Um, and not in alcoholic products, you can go up to 5%. And it will provide a little bit of body and you know sweetness. The same with glycerin. Glycerin's great for adding body to something, but not as a solvent for dissolving things. So propylene glycol is slightly less viscous, but it is still viscous. So it doesn't work great when you want to do extracts, but it does add body sweetness. It's flavor neutral, so it's not an issue to work with it. It's not going to affect the flavor too much other than adding some sweetness. It's got ultra low toxicity. Your body actually produces it as a metabolic uh, process. So, you know, it's found in your body already. So if you want to use the a solvent that has all the characteristics that you want, propylene glycol. Now, a word, you may see something called DPG dipropylene glycol used in the perfume world. You cannot use that in the flavor world. It's not good for your kidneys, so it's fine for external use, but dipropylene glycol is not fine for internal use. So if you see something, don't be confused by propylene glycol and dipropylene glycol. They're different substances. One you can ingest, propylene glycol. The other, you can't, dipropylene glycol. Uh, just remember that when you're ordering things and don't get confused. Now let's get into these two here. One's triacetin, the other's triethyl citrate. Both great solvents. So triacetin, 
goes back to the 1930s. It's a triglyceride and negative connotation with triglycerides, but they're basically human fat. This is the smallest one. The amount you're going to use is, you know, hundreds if not thousands of times smaller than what you're going to get on your plate when you're eating. Uh, you're really only gonna use this at about 200 milligrams per liter or 200 parts per million. Uh, because anything above 500 parts per million with this starts to taste uh, unpleasant. And below 500 parts per million, you get kind of a sweet flavor, fairly neutral. So it's not going to affect things, but it is an excellent solvent. So this is one part uh, bitter orange oil and two parts triacetin. And other than a little bit of a haze, it's pretty much fully soluble. So uh, uh, the solvent power of this to dissolve terpenes means that it's going to dissolve anything. And if you look at the molecular structure, uh, you'll notice all these methyl groups on it. And that's gonna help you dissolve terpenes because terpenes do not have any oxygen in them. And I did a video on propylene glycol and uh, glycerin before and explains kind of the chemistry of how that works. So if you need a review, go check that out. But if it's dissolving orange oil and you only, you're only getting a slight haze, then it is a excellent solvent for flavor development. So you're gonna dissolve things like parasimine, which is a terpene and pretty common in some natural products. So uh, it will get that into solution. Now there is no usage limit on triacetin. So there's no legal regulation saying you can only use so much. But as I mentioned, above 500 parts per million, it gets unpleasant. Now, if you were to take a spoonful of this, you'd find it really unpleasant. Uh, it, not quite as unpleasant as uh, triethyl citrate, but it doesn't have a neutral taste at high concentrations, unlike glycerin and even propylene glycol are you know, reasonably neutral in their flavor at high concentrations. But as long as you're below 500 parts per million or 500 milligrams per liter, you are going to do fine with it. And it actually works really well. So other than that, uh, this is the one that I like to use uh, if I'm not using alcohol. So this is my you know, choice for it. And one more thing about triacetin, it's just a, a combination of actually glycerin and acetic acid. So you just re react glycerin with acetic acid uh, and you'll actually get triacetin. So uh, nothing scary in it for those that fear chemical names and you should never fear a chemical name because it's just a name. It's understanding below the surface where you can really understand what compounds are. The last one is triethyl citrate. Now this one's a really good solvent. This is again, bitter orange oil and triethyl citrate, and it's perfectly clear. And it's two parts this to one part uh, orange oil, and you get a clear solution. It's been holding together for at least a week now. Uh, I mixed them up a little while ago. There is no limitation on use, though this one, if you're to take a spoonful of it, it will make you have to take a seat. I find, I tried that one day and it was, terrible. But again, at low concentrations, you know, 200 parts per million. So if you're using, you're making a flavor compound that's half and half, half solvent, half flavors, and then you dose it at 200 to 400 parts per million, you're going to be fine. You're not going to find, it's going to have a mildly sweet flavor. As soon as you get above 500 parts per million in your samples, it's going to start having a effect on flavor. But again, trying it straight was just like one of the, you know, not pleasant at all. Made me had to rethink how I try things, but it's not toxic. It's just an ester of citric acid and ethanol and the ethanol in it is just an alcohol group and it's not going to have any effect. So it's not like using alcohol. It's just one of the molecules in that molecule. It's really safe to use. The one benefit it may have, and I haven't found a lot of you know trustworthy information on this, but it is said to be an emulsifier, at least a minor one. And so that emulsification can help with your flavors when you're putting them into a drink, for example. So if you're making a non-alcoholic beverage, 
Uh, this may have an advantage, but it's hard to say. Uh, we need to do some more experimenting on that. Now, again, there's no limit on it, but you know, if you want to keep your levels below 500 parts per million, it's going to have a mildly sweet flavor. Above that, don't go. Even practically imperceptible below 100 parts per million. It's a good one. Now, prices for all of these are about the same, even alcohol. Uh, alcohol can be cheaper than some of these, depending on the quantity you buy. Propylene glycol is quite readily available, especially at vape shops. Uh, this meets, especially the 99% or USP is perfectly safe for food use. So don't worry about that. And most of the triacetin and triethyl citrate is for internal use. Uh, it's often used in pharmaceutical compositions, so it's pretty safe to buy these. You know, don't, you don't have to look for anything special. Now, it's one of those things that if you're working with all these different flavor compounds and you don't want to use alcohol, uh, pick one of these two. I just seem to like triacetin better, but I can see benefits to triethyl citrate. You might want to try them both. Again, the triethyl citrate does do a better job of dissolving orange oils and other high terpene materials. Uh, triacetin is perfectly satisfactory, though there is a slight haze in this one. Uh, they're not very viscous, uh, so less viscous than propylene glycol, but more viscous than alcohol. So if we were to take the triethyl citrate and pour it, you know, there is some viscosity to it, but it's not terrible. It's about the same as propylene glycol. If you're doing an extract, I'm not sure you'd want to use this, but you can try and it might work well for you. I just haven't tried it yet. So those are your, you know, three alternates, propylene glycol, triacetin, and triethyl citrate. All non-alcoholic, all very good for dissolving flavor compounds. So you can use them in place of alcohol for making flavor dilutions or, you know, things to dose flavors. Uh, as for extracts, maybe the viscosity might play a role in making it a much slower process, but it'll have better extracting power than vodka, for example. And it does dissolve essential oils perfectly fine. So give those a shot. And you know, if you have any questions, let me know. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.